What is happening everybody on YouTube? Steve here with Rake and Profit coming back to you guys with another video and this is Green Room episode number 44 here with the Bonafide Hustler and in today's live Green Room show we're going to be talking about the worst and most common garage sale pitfall pitfalls to avoid. So now is garage sale season. Uh, now is the time to make money with garage sales. So we thought no better time but now to talk garage sales. But before we dive into the show, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Steve Rakin, 29 years old from Connecticut. I buy and sell on eBay, Amazon, and Craigslist, mostly from garage sales, thrift stores, pawn shops, and sometimes retail stores. Uh, I've been buying and selling for about three years. It's what I do for my full-time gig. And with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Chris, a.k.a. the Bonafide Hustler, a.k.a. my trainer. Oh, I got it, dude. What's up, guys? Bonafide Hustler here. And today, we're going to be talking about garage sale pitfalls. I reside in Austin, Texas. I flip stuff I find from eBay. Oops. Hold on. I, find, I flip stuff I find from garage sales, estate sales, yard sales, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, and I put it on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth, and consignment stores in town. Um, you know that last part where I say consignment stores in town? I never elaborate on that. You know elaborate, what man. Talk to him about it. Consignment store in town. I don't know if you guys have this. called Play it against sports. You can take in all kinds of crazy stuff, lacrosse equipment, football stuff, frisbee golf discs, all this crap, and they'll cut you a check at you know whenever it sells. They'll cut you. I, I go in there monthly, and I have like thirty bucks in there just sitting there, yeah. I but I don't take it. I wait for there's until there's something that I have to buy in there, and then I use my check for that. That way, I don't take any pay. Like. So I'm not getting taxed. Yeah, you remember though when I was with you and you were like, you were telling me about played against sports. You went in there to go see if you had any checks available, and there was that Cannondale mountain bike that was sitting in front. You remember that day? Oh yeah, I remember that one. And that was the first day that I was starting Snapchat. Like I was trying to figure out how it worked, and that was like one of the first clips in my story. So uh, for all you folks who uh, followed me on Snapchat from day one, you know about that bicycle. But with that being said, guys, uh, we may be having a couple more people joining in. Um, Eric, aka the college picker is on a cross country road trip right now on his bicycle. He's already gone over like 2000 miles. So I don't know if he's going to have Wi-Fi tonight. I think he's out in the middle of nowhere. So if you're, if you're out driving and you see a crazy guy riding his bike on the side of the road with like 400 pounds of stuff and eBay and Amazon merchandise, that's him. Uh, Yong, aka uh, retro aficionado. He should be coming in shortly, but he's fighting that San Jose or that, that Santa Clara, I forget where in California, traffic. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to pass that over to Chris, the Bonafide Hustler. Since this is the Green Room show, he is going to be kind of hosting it and kind of moving it in the, the direction that he wants. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it back over to you, man. Take the ball and run with it. All right, I got it. So I'm going to make sure that our sound check sounds good, of course, um, or make sure that we do a sound check. So let's make sure this gets done. Check, check, one, two, three. I'm gonna read out some comments in the feed. My question to you, funny question of the day is, what are you wearing while you're watching this right now? And be <laughs> honest. All right, so oh, that's the funny gosh. question of the day. Let's just, I just wanna see some responses because I, there's a, quite an interesting response in here from Elizabeth Rubin. Hi, Liz here from San Diego. I'm currently in Kodiak, Alaska right now with a husband fishing for halibut. <laughs> like, that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I know, it's like, it's, it's crazy, man. So uh, there are a lot of people talking about the Green Room Meetup in Austin, which um, we've closed the meetup now, and uh, it's going down in about two and a half weeks, which is going to be crazy. Um, here's what people are wearing. Blue polo, white shorts, sports bra shorts. That's Chevy's in first. Gym shorts, white tee, no socks. We're closed. Brooks Brothers, Trevor West. There you go. Metallica shirt. Ooh, Dave Ben, my best friend. There you go. Which one? I want to know which one. Um, you're killing me, small shirt. I know that one. That's from the Sandlot. Um, George's wrestling shirt. <laughs> Backwards, flat back. God, this guy got really into it, man. <laughs> <laughs> David Hirsch, only socks. Okay. Um, long black dress and a jean jacket. All right. <laughs> Travis Jameson, a bare ass in a leather chair. All right, this is great. This is great. <laughs> so, you know, clearly we have a very friendly kind of banter here in the green room hangout. And this is the 44th episode. So, of season two, by the way. Guys. So, <laughs> can I, can I, I get Model it? girl. Cherie Harrison, yeah, yeah, she's she's one of our loyal supporters. So Adidas tracksuit. This is Stephen Fredericks about to sell drugs to somebody. Um, okay, so that's basically what's going on in the comment feed. I think we sound good. In fact, no one told us that we're sounding good. They all just want to type in what they're wearing. So, um, we want to make sure we give really good value on the show before we get started. I want to let everyone know that if you did want to like ace up a garage sale and know more items to sell, of course you got to pick up our guide. It's down below. Okay, so right we'll probably talk this a few times in the show. If you're not seeing what's going on here, you'll see it again at the very tail end of the show. Make sure you pick up this guide. 
save it to your phone. Whenever you're bored of the DMV or the waiting room somewhere or the doctor's office or something, start looking at this guide maybe before you go to sleep. <clears throat> this is like a college test prep book, so that way you can get, get kind of accustomed with the pictures, what to avoid, common pitfalls. We have all that in the uh, 100 Amazing Items to resell. So it's a very, very reliable, like it's got 100 reliable items that you can find in garage sales. It's not just like some rare, you know, Nintendo game and this and that. It's none of that stuff. It's, it's straight up like really good stuff that you can find. Okay. Um, all right. So I guess we uh, sound good. Let's go into the uh, show. And if you do want to put a comment down, it's really easy to do. Just uh, put it in the feed like everyone else is doing. If you watch this when it's not live, it's not a big deal. But I mean, hook us up with the like button. Hit that like 91 button. people in the house right now, Chris, man. What should they do, man? How many people? 91 viewers, man. Dedicated hustlers in the house. Hit the like button now if you're wearing a tracksuit, if you're wearing just socks, if you're <laughs> bucking in your chair and you're watching two dudes ramble about garage shows, hit that like button. Um, we really do appreciate it. It, it basically um, shows us that we're, doing, we're on the right track and we're doing good content for you guys. Um, okay, so we're going to lead into <clears throat> what Rekin was talking about earlier, which it's garage show season, right? And, and right, even in Connecticut, which is the northeast part of the country, yep. um, I mean, is, is it full effect right now? Yeah, yeah. We're in... We're definitely in full effect. We have a lot of rain over here, but if it's a nice day and you know, even if it's a little rainy, if it's a little hazy out, there's definitely a ton of garage sales out right now. We are in full effect mode. Okay, that's cool. So all the way from, you know, over there, I don't know if the north northwest like Seattle, you know, all that is having, you know, full blown garage sales. But quite honestly, this is one of the best places. I talked about this on some private show in the green room recently. It's one of the best places to find low cost, low risk goods. Are garage sales, right? We're talking below the prices of thrift stores, below the prices of pawn shops. This is on the fly. A lot of people not knowing what their stuff is worth. Very, you know, like this is very common, right? This is a common thing. You go to a garage sale, it's like people just want this stuff out. So you're dealing with a very interesting psychology, right? The person on the other side is really trying hard not to bring that stuff back in their house. And you on your side, well prepared hustler, you're trying to acquire the goods for the lowest cost possible. So the balance is, you know, not offending the people, getting the best deal, and knowing how to do that. But a lot of people mess it up. There's a lot of people that I've seen when I garage sale with them, they mess it up a little bit, right? So we're gonna talk about how you can mess it up, what you can do better. Um, and next question for the feed, are the garage sales in full swing in your town? Let us know in the comment feed, because I'm curious, and what is your town? Um, so yeah, I think garage selling starts with prepping, Rakin, right? Absolutely, the preparation is key. If you, if you don't prep properly, you're probably taking a lot of money out of your pocket. That that 30 to 45 minutes up to an hour that you spend prepping could save you so much time and put you in a position to succeed so much more than your competition. Okay. Do you have you ever just gone out the door, let's say late, right? Let's say you missed your wake up window. All you the go time. Out the door, All the you, time. You go out late, but you have no plan. You just go. Yeah, I actually just did it uh, last week and I actually wasn't even planning on going garage selling. And uh, it was a late night. Jameson was in town. I mean, we, we were spending a week together. It was, it just, I knew that if, if, for me personally, if I don't get seven or eight hours of sleep, I know it's going to be trouble that day. My mindset's going to be off. I'm not going to be feeling great. And I'm big into my workouts right now. And I, I just needed to get some rest and it, it's it, whatever. Long story short, I said, I'm not going to go out garage selling. So I woke up at like nine and nine o'clock in the morning and kind of just took my time, went through my morning routine. It was like 10 o'clock in the afternoon. I said, I'm going to just go grab a coffee. I went to grab a coffee and next thing you know, I'm diving down the rabbit hole. I see a sign and I'm like swerving. To, I got my coffee and I'm like swerving the other way. I'm like not even planning on going garage sailing. I hit a garage sale and then I see another sign. I'm just, I'm just going farther and farther down the rabbit hole. Next thing you know, I'm out for two hours, but I uh, found a bunch of stuff and uh, didn't prepare, you know, found a bunch of stuff. But if I did prepare, I bet you I would have done so much better. Okay. So with all the profit that you think you made, I mean, do you think you would have done Let's say you, you think about 400 range, four or 500 maybe? Um, well, I only went out for about, I think, I think an hour or so. So, I mean, for an hour or so, I probably did a couple hundred dollars in profit. Okay. So that's one of the things um, is garage sale season is one of those very, very serious kind of parts of the year where you really got to look at this as contributing a fair amount to your overall business if you do it right. So prep is very important. Um, I do a fair amount of prep. Um, in fact, we have a... 
uh, a thing that we're working on right now, it's actually going to be finalized in a week, but we have a garage sale guide that's coming out, which is going to be super cool. Like, I can't wait. I was in charge of doing four chapters in that guide. That's coming out to the open market very soon. It's going to be free to the green rumors. Um, but in there, we talk about a lot of cool things and a lot of pitfalls. So one of the pitfalls today we're going to talk about is people that just kind of wing it, right? And winging it is not – there's nothing – I don't want to say there's nothing wrong with winging it because I know the other side of the prep story. I know that I've tried winging it and it's not, I don't make as much money as if I just took an hour out of my time and did a little bit of prep and I made sure my vehicle was clear, it had gas, right. the tires are inflated, I made sure everything was right. Gas is the worst when you go out garage sailing and you don't have any gas, you didn't prepare. That is, the, I had to just throw that in there. That's happened to me. It's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. So you got to you just got to make sure that I see a lot of people, you know, kind of dwindling. Um, with the prep going, okay, I just wing it. You gotta take time to prep. We'll give you the two places to do the prep. It's gonna be crazy. This is gonna be yard sale treasure map. That's the easiest way to prep. Take some time the night before and get your list going on. Okay, you can search for specific things if you want, or you can just hover over the sales and figure out which ones you want to put into your route. It's very important to do. But I see some people messing up that. Second thing I think, see think people messing up on is not realizing what the golden hour is or golden hours. Right? These are hours where. Um, where you shouldn't be filling up your gas, right? You should not be doing anything other than hitting sales. I'm not talking about stopping for coffee, no tacos, no bathroom breaks. This is a very important time of the day where you will make a bulk of your money in these two hours, typically. Um, in Connecticut, is it, are your golden hours eight to 10? Yeah. Or are they seven to yeah. nine? Yeah, about eight to ten. It's not. Some places are earlier. Some people say seven. For for us out here, typically it's it's about yeah, probably eight to ten. Um, you know, but just just to throw it out there, I've I've been hitting some home runs lately over the last month, um, past noon. So, <laughs> I mean, they you know the hustlers can't be everywhere. Uh, you know, so but eight to ten, eight to ten. Yeah, 8 to 10 is the same in Austin, Texas. So when I look at my 8 to 10 golden hour, I also try to supplement it with a couple 6.30s or 7s in there as well. It's not uncommon for me to run into Brock sometimes or Robert from the green room, um, other people in my town that have taken garage sales very, very seriously, and they know through the green room how important it is to your overall business. So if you take some time and treat it very seriously for your business, you would be very surprised what you get out. With very little prep, you don't have to prep that much. You, know, you just have to start getting into the habit of prepping. All right, so a lot of people are talking about, here's another thing that people, common pitfalls rake in, take small bills. Mm. Yeah, it's a good one, right? Nothing yeah, higher than a 20. mistake before too. Yeah, nothing higher than a 20. Like if you look at your cash stash and it's like a pie chart, 20% of that, I mean, I would say in my cash stash, I would say 40% of it is 20s. And then the re there's like 10% that are 10s and a yep. whole bunch of fives and a whole bunch of ones. Yep, yep, you know? same here. That's definitely an important... Uh, part of the preparation, having that ready for sure. Because again, you know, if you're wasting your time during the golden hour, stopping at your ATM and then you have all twenties and then you have to stop at a gas station to break it. I mean, what could a half hour cost you, Chris? I mean, what could a half hour of you, you know, filling up your gas and, you know, breaking bills and going to the ATM and getting breakfast and a coffee, what can that cost you, man, during, you know, from you know, nine to nine? If you say 30 minutes, I think minimum, 30 minutes minimum, I think it would cost me about $300. Minimum. That's like, well, that's what, like the low. I think on the high end, it's about seven hundred. What on really? average, like for let's just say when you go garage selling on a Saturday, obviously you know let's just take it over like a year period. On a Saturday when you go out for I don't know maybe three to four hours, I'm guessing. What do, what do you like to t take home? You know, uh, on average, if you had to say, just to give some context to this whole this whole video. If they look at my previous video like i launched a video on my channel yesterday it was called uh like huge neighborhood wide garage sale and i score that's just the title of the video so when you're watching this look for that video on my channel that's like an example of like a thousand dollar day right there yeah that's a thousand dollar day so um you know i shoot for like at least a thousand dollar day i'm happy with you know if i if i busted my ass and i'm in there and i did my prep and i make five then i'm okay with that because i know i did everything it takes to get there but in garage sale, peak garage sale season, there's no excuses to why anybody out there, especially in the green room, especially in the green room, because that's all we seem to talk about sometimes on the weekends is what you find in garage sales. Um, there's no reason why you can't make a thousand bucks. There's no reason. I'd like to, I'd like to agree with you. I would, I would agree. For me going out 
at least $500. Um, you've been in the game quite a bit longer than I have, and you have the antique booth. And you just, you've been in the game a lot longer than I have, so you definitely have more experience. I've gone out with you. You kind of know a little more than I do in terms of what to pick. Um, but 500 to 1,000 is pretty average for me. I'd like to pose the question for everybody watching right now. When you go out, let's say 8 to 2 or 8 to 12 or whatever, um, what do you expect to bring in? Like I said, around 500 to 1,000. Chris is around 1,000 plus, um, depending on the day. What do you guys like to bring in? On peak, it should be a little bit more than 1,000, though. On mm. peak. I'm talking multiple neighborhood-wide garage sales. I mean, I'm talking – I make sure everything is right. I don't mess with the tacos until like 11. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. If you watch my videos, I'm exactly what I'm talking about. Those tacos are most they're a reward for me Like that I did everything I could possibly do. Taco Deli, right? Yeah. Taco Deli is the only place I go. Oh, I cannot wait to come into <laughs> Texas, man. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like so sick and tired of Chipotle and Moe's. I'm like, I need some freaking Austin. Oh, I can't take it. Why'd you have to bring it up, man? That's <laughs> so good, man. I was uh, training a guy this morning or my workout partner, I was saying he was, he was like, I got to get out of here right now. I was like, what about a smoothie? He's like, I got to get out of here. I was like, why? He's like, I'm going to talk to Delhi, man, before I go to work. I was like, <laughs> he's like, I go there every day, man. It's the most addicting place in town. I was like, yeah. So for the people who oh, are sorry, watching. 500 is what they're saying. A lot of people, 500, yep. 750, 1200. And that's pretty cool. Parker Profits averages between 750, 1200. At least 700 on a Saturday, at least 300 on a Friday. That's cool. Yep. Uh, how are, uh, you know, Fridays? That's another like kind of secret out there. If you are not a part-time hustler and you're a full-time hustler, you got to get out on Fridays, man. Fridays are interesting kind of things. I've found some crazy deals on Fridays with zero competition out there. I'm talking zero, you know? I speaking of zero competition and, and again, speaking of not preparing, I went out for another coffee uh, a couple Sundays ago and just slaughtered it, man. At one garage sale, I got everything for 20, man. I, I got like at least probably $300 worth of stuff for 20 bucks. And it was like, nobody was there, man. It was literally a treasure chest with gold in it. And nobody's there. This whole driveway, man, you would have freaked out, man. Whole driveway is full of stuff. I picked up this G shock for like, two dollars man it's got bluetooth and everything on it i'm using it for my workouts now you know you know how you keep asking me dude get a timer get a timer bada yeah. bing bada boom timer's coming soon um yeah. it's crazy man it's crazy sundays and fridays i agree yeah the golden hours the focus on the golden hours and garage sales is just like the same amount of focus i tell Raken to put into his workouts and if you lose the focus you lose the gains you know but if you stay focused on something guys it doesn't matter what it is in life if you stay focused and you try to figure out all the little um you know how do I say it? Uh, you know, the word for little spaces in the armor. I don't want to say that word because it's slightly like borderline racist, but it's not. I mean, it's just a word. But you know what I'm saying? You find the little spots in the armor where you can penetrate through and make a victory, right? And that's the thing is I think – now, I think that one of the other things that people are scared about with garage sales is that they pay asking prices when they're right there, right? Mm. I'm guilty of that every now and then. But when I pay an asking price, I, I, it's usually because I need to get that thing on my side of the equation quickly. Because the second the cash goes over, it's almost like a done deal. You know what I'm saying? Like they can't retract or a person can't come from inside the house and go, what? You just sold my what? Are, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, I've had that happen before. Yeah. When the deal is too good, you pay immediately and you Especially put it in. Especially if the wife, if the wife, if the husband goes inside and you and she sells you the tool set or something, you better get that quick and get out of there. Yeah. That's a pro. That's a super pro tip right there is if you're dealing with something that's male oriented, ask the female. If you're dealing with something that's female oriented, ask the male because vice versa, they won't know what anything is really worth. Uh, typically, right? So that's one of those interesting things that you can do out there. Um, what's up, Yong? Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, man, you got a lot of magnets on your fridge. What are those magnets? What's on the magnets, dude? Oh, it's my friend's kids. Okay, you don't have one of those like things that have like stupid words, like where you put all the words in different places and you make all these no. dirty stuff. No, no. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure. Don't don't ever get that. Even if you find it in a garage shop or dirt cheap, Yong, please don't buy those magnets. <laughs> those like sentences. Um. Good to see you, Young. Young, introduce yourself for the people out there. We're having a garage sale show, and people are loving it. Who are you? Sure. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, like Chris said, my name is Young. I live in San Jose or Santa Clara, California. Um, like these guys, um, I do it all. Yeah, yeah. I, I resell on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, Antique Booth, uh, whatever else, miscellaneous. Okay. Cool. Um, so there is Young. We're going to be talking about common pitfalls. Of course, you know this because you've seen this. Um, and by the way, Raken, um, one of the things that, and I, you know, if you don't thumbs up the show for the content, at least thumbs up the show for the graphic that Raken created, which was like really cool for this one show. You like I that? Thought, 
the graphic, we had a comment at the very beginning of the show saying the graphic for the show that you mailed out on the email was like super on point. It was so awesome. Nice. I don't know who said it, but someone was like, yeah, your work was really good. So thumbs up the video for Raken's graphic for the show. Boom. The, on his channel. He'll attach it to the video. It's really cool. I'm trying uh, to be the next Glenn Zubia. That's right. Well, <laughs> you're not going to be able to because he's been, going, <laughs> he's been training like eight years in graphic design or something like that to become him. <laughs> anyway, um, shout out to Glenn Zubia. Hustler hacks at the more than 10K subscribers now, right? Over 10K, I think, right? Yeah, he uh, he hit, I believe he hit his 10K mark and uh, he's growing quick, man. Awesome, awesome YouTube channel right there. Yep. Um, so there's a question from Hoobie the Real. Hey, tell us about your, your golden hour, Yong, in Santa Clara. If, if someone says, what's the golden hour, how would you define that? The golden hour, for me, it's... It's usually right between eight and nine. Hours. It doesn't have to be an hour, but like, what is it like where you absolutely concentrate on garage sales, nothing else, like no gassing up your car, no like making Buddy go poo in someone's yard, like none <laughs> of that stuff. Like, what? Okay, that's usually between seven and nine. Okay, so you're going hours a little bit earlier than me and Raikens. That's cool. So people get yeah. people get started really early over there in Santa Clara, huh? I, dude, I, I wake up super early. Okay. What time are you out the door, Young? I'm usually, I mean, it depends. Like, I mean, the earliest garage sale that I can find, the better. Um, but I'm usually out the door by 6.30. Yeah, same here. Um, well, that's cool because I know, the reason why I'm asking Young these questions is I know he is a diehard garage sale. I'm talking to this guy. Like, you eat, sleep, breathe a garage. Like, you go to garage sales so many. You find some crazy deals. I mean, crazy deals over there in Cali. People that are fit people selling the most amazing fit stuff, like fit bikes and, like, all this cool stuff, and you're getting it for, like, really good prices. Um, so, yeah, we're all, uh, you know, I'm very jealous with that and your book sales that you have. Your, some of your book sales are out of this world in the green room, um, not to mention your women's shoe sales, too. Um I started doing something in a garage sale. See, this is one of my common pitfalls is that I was just going for like the gold, the gold, the gold. And Ray can taught me, for example, guys. So when you're at a sale, um, so now picture that we're in a sale. There's boxes everywhere. There's tarps with clothes over there at the grass. Over here, there's some skis leaning up against a tree. You know, there's some people in the garage that's open, and you can see a cash box, and you can clearly tell who's the buyer and who are the people that are around. One of the things that Raken told me was like, if you're just sitting around and maybe you're waiting for a friend to check out or something like that, or you're waiting for maybe one of your garage sale associates to like analyze something a little bit further or work a deal, don't pass up the book section. Like you always, you, you are like notorious for that, Raken. Like doesn't matter what's going on, you are gonna hit the book section in every garage sale, right? Man, books. <sighs> Speaking of killer, killer finds, man. I, I found a book sale. Uh, a garage sale by a woman. She she was she just graduated with a master's degree, and I walked up and uh, there's a bunch of people at the sale, but nobody's looking at the books. Yang would have freaked out because he's a he's a book expert. There's just like 20 or 25 like crazy books, like all college textbooks, and she's like, "Yep, dollar each or 50 oh, cents wow. each." Gosh. And I scan them, and it's like 80, 90, 60, 40, 70, 60. I'm like. 40,000 rank, 10,000 rank, 8,000 rank. I'm like, holy mackerel. Like, I'm going to retire. I'm never going to I'm <laughs> never gonna have to work again uh, a day in my life. But, uh, man, I, I just do it because there's so much money, and people treat it like it's nothing. And I love things that people treat like like they're not they, like they don't have any value, but they do. And I think that's why Yang does it as well. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes when you get into that situation, when you scan, like, two or three books, and they're coming up at $40, $50, $80 each. Buy the whole pile. Just buy the whole pile. Just say, hey, bro. Forty dollars for the whole box or something. Yeah, buy the whole pile. Don't even mess around. Just go. Yeah, don't even bother. Yeah, cool. Let's just do you it. Need that on. That's that on advice right there. That's the best. That's really yeah. good advice. Yeah, just, just don't even worry about it. If you're gonna piss away a dollar or two, and you're gonna have to end up donating a couple bucks, maybe even ten out of the forty. Let's say, for example, who cares? Like, you know, what I'm saying, like the grand yeah. scheme. Like, you you see already enough to to go. Okay, I know what's going on here. The majority of these are all winners. Buy the whole pile. That's just what you do. Yeah, right absolutely. For a box, buy the whole pile. I, when I when I scan books, the funny thing is I was at a garage sale the other day, and I, I always feel like weird scanning in front of the people. It's just, I don't know, man, because they don't know what you're doing. They think you're with like the CIA or something. Well, there's like this whole – you would have laughed, Young. I go up to this garage sale, and there's like this big box of books and all textbooks. I'm like, oh, here we go. And all the people running the sale are sitting right in front of it. So imagine mm -hmm. my webcam and imagine five people sitting down and there's a huge box of textbooks. Whoa. So I'm like, oh, this is going to get weird quick. So I'm scanning, and they start looking at me, and they're like – they're like looking at me and they're like, young man, what are you doing to the books? And I said, uh, I'm scanning the books to see what they're worth. And uh, I don't know, it was just hilarious because it's like, I don't know if anyone in the comments section 
uh, could relate. You go to a sale and there's a big box of books and they're all right there and they're just they're looking down at you like, what in the world are you doing? I just admit I'm a reseller. It's the easiest way to diffuse the situation. I'm scanning books. I buy and sell. Uh, I'm going to try to help you out as best as I can, but um, most books aren't worth much money, so I'll see if I can help you out. That was my response, and uh, then they stopped staring at me like a psycho. That's cool, man. Um, I have a funny story regarding that because Max from the Green Room, uh, E-Money, my brother, and I went out like maybe three or four weeks ago, and we were in the same predicament. Like There was like video games on this table right in front of like the people that were <laughs> And, em and Emerson's like scanning them all. He's like, I don't know what to do. I was like, yeah, dude. Like, so he's scanning them. We didn't get any of this on. Uh, maybe we got on the video. I can't tell. But he's scanning it. And the people are like, why are you scanning it? He's like, um, I just want to see if I'd have this in my inventory. Like, and, oh, God. and then they're like, wait, you catalog all your, your personal. Like, <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, I just want to make sure. I don't know if I have this in my video game collection or not, so I catalog them all. I was like, oh my gosh. Why does it say the Amazon seller app? Why are prices coming up? Oh, it's so funny. I like, don't go down that rabbit hole. Max was sitting there like when we were walking away. Max is like, oh yeah, you're putting the collection up. You have it all cataloged, Emerson. And he's just like, shut up, dude. Anyway. There was this guy at a Goodwill once, and I knew who he was. He was a reseller, and he was buying like a hundred books in his in his uh, carriage. And the woman goes, "What are you doing with all those books?" And he goes, "I just built a bookshelf, and I'm trying to fill them in." And I'm like, "Why do you have to lie?" <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, Amanda Jordan, what's up in the feed? I, I finally caught a show live. Hey, Steve. Ooh. Wait, just, who's that? Oh, uh, it's Amanda Jordan. <laughs> Anyway. No, I'm just kidding. What's up, Amanda? You know her? No, I don't, but um Okay. Big shout out to Amanda. Steve, do you want to know her? Um depends. Does she own a scan fob? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Does she have a library at her house? Um <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um if you guys are enjoying this video, by the way, uh do a couple things. Hit the like button and make sure you get that guy down below. It's super important. Um yeah, because I want to see what these likes are right now. It's always fun to see like if we're on the right track or not. We aim to you know, give you really good tips and at the same time make you laugh for about an hour. It's really what the show. That's really what the Green Room's all about. It's a really nice, friendly banter, but at the same time, everyone's just willing to go, you know, make it down to the, the nitty gritty, like what is making everybody tick. And it's funny because everyone's almost holding everybody accountable in that room, which is really cool. Um, okay, so let's go into like the next thing, which is um, negotiation. All right. So we gave a tip about if you're going to buy something that's male-oriented, try to hit the female, right? Not hit her, but you know what I'm saying. Like, if you hit her like Chris Brown style, you're probably going to go to jail. But, um, you know, you want to make, you want to bring the male items to the female. You want to bring the female items to the male. And that's how you can get a better deal right there. It's kind of like a weird tip. But anyway, second thing is, I, what I think is, if you don't see something that you want to buy at that garage sale, assess the people, right? Assess the people in the sale and, and start going, okay, what do these people look like? Like, that dude looks outdoorsy. He's got teenage kids, and teenagers love playing video games, but there are no video games here. Maybe if I ask, do you have any, like, Timmy here? Do you have any video games? Do you have any of this? Then they're going to bring it out and go, oh, yeah, remember that, Timmy? You're supposed to bring your video games to the sale. Oh, yeah, let me go inside. That's happened a lot of times. That's actually, that's actually a pro tip from Brock that I learned about a year ago is every garage sale he goes to and he sees some young kids, he's like, do you guys have any video games for sale? So it's really cool. It's a really, really good tip, and it's, a, it's a, you know, the more you practice it, right, the more you will get better at it. Same thing goes in a previous Green Room show, you said when someone goes, hey, what's up, good morning, what are you guys looking for, make sure you have three things that you tell them, all right, recite your three things in your head, and go, if I could find anything at a garage sale, it would be these three things, make sure you have that ready, because it can jog memory, and it can tell people, like, oh, well, we have bikes in the garage that we didn't even think we should even put in the sale, right, like, okay, come look at them, that's happened numerous times. Um... So, Cosmic Thrifter, I love negotiating. I, th I see this as one of the places, uh, Yong and Steve, where people kind of go wrong sometimes, right? Paying up for an item. Um, I think it's very, very important to... <clears throat> do, you know, do you know what it means when I talk about this thing called un uncomfortable silence? Do you know what that means? No. What is that? Elaborate on it. Okay. Uncomfortable silence is a tactic. It's a bona fide cheddar weather tactic, by the way, guys. Um... It's endorsed. I, I trademarked it. Don't worry. You can't make any merch shirts on it. Um, <laughs> but it's they ain't stopping anybody on merch right now. <laughs> yeah. They were, like, designing it, and they're like, damn it, now I can't do it. Um, no, but uncomfortable silence is when someone says, how much do you want to pay for it? Okay, so, like, here's a scenario. I go up to you, Ray, and you're the, buyer, you're the seller, and I'm the buyer. How much do you want for this camera? And you go, well, how much do you want to pay for it? 
See, that's a hustler versus hustler already mentality right there because you never want to be the first one saying the product. That's where you do uncomfortable silence. You do that, eh, well, hmm, I don't know. And you do that for a while, and then they start going, well, how about, and then now you've allowed them to say the first number, which is a starting point. But sometimes the starting point can be extremely low, and you go, well, holy crap, like you just wanted $10 for an N64 with, you know, 20 games. Where you, whereas if you were going, I would give you 80, right? Then you are completely screwed out of 70 bucks. That could have so, been in so pocket. Let's, let's, let's play out a scenario right now. You're at a garage sale, bona fide. <laughs> I'm the seller, and you're you're the buyer. You walk up. There's an N64. There's Zelda. There's Mario. There's freaking every rare game you've ever want to see. Probably valued at about 300 bucks. And you walk up, and you what do you say? I'm I'm standing there, and you and you have you see the games and stuff. What are you going to say to me initially? Well, initially, if I see <clears throat> N64 and I see any of those valuable games, which they're valuable, if you, especially if you mess with FBA, but even if you mess with eBay, they're still valuable. Um, I go, you know, nonchalantly, without looking at it too much, I go, well, how much for the game system? I don't want to show specificity, or like, how do I say that? I don't want to be like, how much for the N64 and the 20 games that I'm seeing that are super rare? Like, you don't want to say that. Are you are you holding on to it, or are you just kind of looking at it? I'm, I'm aloof. I'm borderline aloof, which basically means you're kind of like, eh, you know, like, how much for that? But you're not touching okay. anything. I think you start touching something, then so, they realize there's... No, you have to touch it, though, man. If someone else comes... If someone's around you, yeah, then you start touching it. But if no one's around you, you start playing this little game. So then I say, then I say, well... It was my son's. He went to college. I'm just. I'm not really sure what what it's worth. What do you want to pay? Um, I would say, you know, if I see one game that can net me forty bucks, then I'm automatically thinking forty or below. Like I'm just like, all right, I'm not gonna like. I'm gonna be in this twenty to forty range, right? Automatically. Like I'm just. In, I'm thinking in this range. Five is insulting. Ten is probably super insulting. But twenty starts becoming a bill, like a nice twenty dollar bill. It starts looking pretty good to a garage sale person that's dealing with ones all day and twenty five cent, you know, quarters. A 20 looks pretty powerful, right? Um, two 20s looks even more powerful. So does five 20s. But um, there's a point where you have to realize you are a hustler and you want to get this, you know, the, the system might not work, but the game certainly will work. They're cartridges, right? You just clean them up a little bit. And they will absolutely work. They will absolutely sell. The system might be toast for all you know, you know? So you, typically when you send the system off, it's going to be a system, one controller, a uh, power cable, AV cable, and potentially one game, but usually it's just all that. Um, but yeah, I would be in this 2040 range real quick because I'm a hustler. Like I got to make sure I, I I secure my risk immediately. Are you gonna say the first number though? She just said to you, "I'm not sure what this is worth. My son went to college. I don't know what it's worth. What do you want to pay?" Yeah, that's the part where, if you don't act fast, then likely someone around is hearing this conversation going on and knows about this N64 thing. So yes, in a situation like that, you want to be not insulting, but you're gonna want to put out something, a feeler, right? Because people like that, just the way you said it, the person's never going to be able to like, it's almost like it's impossible for them to come forward with a number because they're just like, but I've had situations like that where they're like, well, how about 10 bucks, you know? Well, that's too low. I just printed out all the eBay um, sold listings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if they, if they, that, they say, well, you know, that's too low. You know, I see these going for like 70 bucks in town. Um, then I go, um, if I see that and I still see two games that I can sell and I make 70 bucks on them and I still see a whole lot of other games, I won't pay the 70. I'll be like, I'll tell you what, you know, I was going to say my next jump was going to be 40 and you're at 70. How about we go 50, right? Mm. I pay 50 for that, right? Well, that's one of the interesting tactics, tactics that I do is to show that I, like I that. hear you, you know, but hear me and then let's go in the middle of that, right? Like I hear you, hear me, here's the middle. And honestly, like 90% of the time, that tactic works pretty good. Um, <laughs> Play dumb about the, all the golden finds, what Parker Prophet said. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. <coughs> Systems are, are, are almost never toast, though, especially N64s. They're damn near never broken. The one that really, I think, is not toast, but it definitely needs more, the, the 72-pin connector or whatever it is, maybe 256-pin connector, is the original Nintendo. You know what I'm talking about? 8-bit Nintendo, the flashing back screen, the flashing black screen when you turn it on, the 8-bit with, Nin with Double Dragon, Ninja Gaiden, all those cool games. Those very seldomly work, honestly. But he's right. An N64 typically is kind of bulletproof. It kind of is. Um, but I've had a couple that just don't work. Um, okay, so <laughs> game seekers. There are only a couple. Of rare, there are only a couple of rare games on the N64. Huh. I kind of have to. I have to disagree with that one um, because these cartridges are getting more rare by the day. You know, and uh, before you know it, they're peeling here and there. 
Some stop playing, but for the most part, I mean, it's still rare to find DK in 007. I mean, I consider that rare now because that's like, what, 20 years ago. When was N64 for you, Young? Do you remember it? What year? I think it was 98 or 97 or something like that. We're pitching like 20 years on the system, 20 years, and those cartridges have to survive all that turmoil to make it to your hands at a garage sale. So, um, anyway, we're going kind of too far into the... There, I, there are plenty, I think there are plenty of rare games in N64. That's just what I'm saying. N64 games in NZ are hot. Um, N64 games are crazy valuable. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, DK, no, Donkey Kong. I mean, it's still fun to find a Donkey Kong. It really is. It came out in 96. Okay, so let's talk more about garage sale stuff. Let's see what um, you guys want to talk about real quick. Let's get a question from the feed about a common pitfall that you think and you want us I'm to... I'm in the comments. Yeah, let's see what they want us to talk about in the feed, and we'll see if we can shed some light on a common pitfall that they want to talk about. That way we can kind of hear the feed out a little bit. <clears throat> came out in 96. That is 20 years, yeah, 20 years. So, um, oh my gosh, Ben, ben Langenberg. Last year, before I knew about retro games being so popular, I passed on 200 NES and SNES games for $300. I wish I would have known. <laughs> anyway. wow. That's crazy, man. Um, yeah, it's 20 years, guys. It is 20 years. Um, Global Gibby says, in this example that Steve Ray can post to me, I'd go 50 bucks, show the bills to them. That's a really good tactic. Show bills. Mm. And I think they would immediately just go for it. Yeah, true. Um, do I test every game before I sell it? Typically, yeah. I mean, I, I, I turn it on, which I have an N64 thing right here. I've got a question. Yeah. What do you do when you go to a garage sale and there's price stickers on everything? That's a question that just came in from the uh, yeah. comment section. Young, you, you can still negotiate. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, most likely they want that stuff gone. Um, so, um, so regardless of whether they want, they have stickers on it or not, I mean, you can still negotiate. Only from my experience, the only time you can never negotiate is when they do that freaking eBay printout. <laughs> um, and, that's, and that's just dumb, right? Uh, but I mean, even if they have like those little stickers on it, you can still negotiate. Yeah, you gotta be very careful with those eBay things because even if you find like the really cool, dude, the last one I went two weeks ago, went to a garage sale, I saw like the best Keurig of all. You know, there's a Keurig that's like, I want to say it's almost like 300 bucks new. Like it's something mm. crazy, right? And this lady was like, used once, only 350. And I was like, hmm. And it was all steel and badass looking. And I was like, all right, I've never seen a Keurig like that. Maybe this is one of these like thousand dollar Keurigs in real life or something like that. So I look it up and it's like brand new on Amazon with Prime. It's like two seventy nine ninety nine. I'm like, dude, this is crazy, man. People just, oh, it's like they'll be bringing it back in. That's the thing. They don't. Maybe they're brand spanking new to garage sales. They think they'll find just some idiot to come and pay for it. Which I'm sure maybe there are some people who will. But you know, I think they're gonna learn their lesson after they after their first garage sale. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Garage Flips from the feed right now says, when I see an eBay printout, I bolt. Liz Richardson says, eBay printouts are a sign to leave. I'll tell you what's a sign to leave, man. A geeky dude that has not those $1, $2, $3 stickers, but like the labels that you use for FBA, and it says like $25, $75 on stuff, and I'm like, dude, the geeky dude with like the longer labels... I, I gotta stay far away from that. I, I was at a I was at a garage sale the other day, and there was a huge bin of WWE and ROH, I believe, um, DVDs, which are worth good money. And I thought it was six DVDs for a dollar, so I'm like, I'll take the whole bin for twenty. There was like two hundred of them, and he's like, "Are you out of your freaking mind?" He's like a little nerdy guy, and he like looks at me, and he like puffs his chest out, and he gets in this like very aggressive stance, and I'm like, uh, like flight or flight, what's it called, fight or flight mode? I'm like, this guy's getting real aggressive looking, and he's like, "Dude, look at the thing." It was it was six bucks each. I thought it was six for a dollar. <laughs> so he got all cobra on you. Yeah, he uh, he was like, "God damn!" He got all cobra. He started <laughs> he just started doing a baboon on Raken, man, where he like go up from like. Anyway. Same guy with a freaking giant mountain bike. Things absolutely destroyed. Destroyer the cracks in the frame. Derailleurs destroyed. The whole chain's all destroyed. He wants like two hundred bucks for it. I'm like, this thing's like three hundred dollars new. Oh my gosh. Yeah. People are completely clueless. That's the reason why education is the most important thing you can do in the game right now. Um, it'll save you from buying some really terrible fines, and it'll also make you money in the sense that it'll tell you what to buy. Because quite honestly, if you think about it, guys, if you make bad deals, that's not really doing anything for you, right? It, yeah, you're learning through experimentation. <laughs> and you really want to be hitting home runs like quite often, especially in peak rush season. You don't want to be dicking around with like 
oh, I bought it for one and I can sell it for four. Like, you don't want to be messing with that kind of stuff. Mm. You want to be messing with this, like, I bought it for one or two, I'll <laughs> five, and I can sell it for, you know, 50, 100. Like, I got, a, stuff. I got a question for you guys. I want to throw it out to Yang first. You, you mentioned that 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. is your golden hour, right? That's where you're making mm -hmm. the most money. So, you know, as you know, you only got 120 minutes. You got two hours. What do you do to be able to continue to move quickly? I mean, have you ever got caught up on an item and you're sitting there for 20 minutes in the golden hour? I've done it before when I was newer. What do you do to move quickly and with a purpose to keep hitting more sales? Because, you know, if you get stuck, like kind of like what Chris was saying, you don't want to get stuck at a garage sale only to make 10, 15 bucks profit. You're spending 20 minutes when... For me, like I want to move as quick as possible because I want to hit those home runs. I want to hit those home runs. So, do you have any tips? Yeah, um, I mean, the first thing that I do is I always scout out the Craigslist ad, and I look for particular items that I want. You know, games, uh, uh, board games, electronics. So that way, when I get there, I know what to look for. And so that way, I'm not just browsing. I know what to specifically look for. And another good tip is it's going to sound harsh, but don't get into a conversation with the. Uh, Spend, I mean, you know, you guys know me. I love engaging. I'm surprised you said that. I know. I, I'm just going to say that. I mean, I love talking, and, and, you know, I love communicating with people, but especially, like, the older folks, right? They love to talk, but just be like, thank you, sir, you know, but I got to go, uh, you know, because time is money, at, you know, during those, those two hours. What tips do you have for someone who really – because that, that's happened to me before too, and it's like I'm a nice guy. I don't want to be rude, but it's just someone right. who just like doesn't stop talking. What can you do to respectfully get out of there? Maybe, Chris, you could answer that as well. Well, it's I, a good thing I, I, I try to put myself in those situations. Like, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a way to do – I used to be in sales for a long time. There's a way to do small banter, and there's a way to do, you know, all right, well, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it, and that's it. You know, you just got to be like, okay, well, thanks a lot, guys. You know, like, you know, be real casual and everything. Um, but typically, I don't, I don't engage too. I, you know, I'll talk about the weather a little bit, or like maybe the house that they have, because I, I source in decent neighborhoods. So I'm always like thinking about property. Like I'm just like, okay, like what do they cost for you to get into this house? Because I want, I want to live here one day in this like nicer neighborhood. I ask house questions a lot, honestly. Um, and sometimes it can be really interesting deals. But like Reagan said, if you want to. Uh, really work on this golden hour, you have to be able to keep these things to a very, very minimum. Um, so I am very short, but I'm not curt. Um, I'm not uh, crass. I'm not any of those words. I'm, I'm, I'm respectful, but I am short always. Um, yeah, so respectful and short. Um, so, uh, hey, Retro, I got a quick question for you. Have you ever been recognized as Retro Aficionado? Yes. Huh? Yes. 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 Ooh. Yes. Actually, I was. This was when Rabbit was in town. It was me, Rabbit, Rabbit, and who else was here? Else was here? I don't remember, but when we brought someone, and then someone taps me on my shoulder, like, Chris, your thing is echoing again. Echoing again. Really? I uh -oh. muted mine. It's mine. It's not me. Uh oh. Let me let me mute up real quick. You tell me if it's me. Hello. Hello. I'll unmute. Tell me right now. Is that better? I don't. I don't hear that. I, I don't hear anything either. Oh wait. Oh wait. I do. Somewhere. I hear an echo. I hear an echo. I don't. It's you, Chris. It's you, I'm telling you. Well, how could be? How can it be me at this stage of the show? How could it be me? Let, let me get out. Let me get out. Let me come back in. All right, guys. Hey guys, in the feed. This, if this Here, show goes I'll, south, why you do that? I'll finish it now. Okay, let me get out, and Young and Ray can stay in. Okay, how about that? Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Sure. sure. How do I get out of this thing? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye. Okay, just okay, get out just already. Get out already. <laughs> okay, yeah, but it was me, Rabbit, and I forget who else was with me, and we were garage selling, and someone taps me on my shoulder, and I turn around, and he goes, "I know you." I was like. From where? He goes from the green room, from the heavy house. Sale? Uh huh. You at a garage sale? Yeah. And uh, um, he goes, I know you. I'm like, from where? He goes from the green room hangouts. I'm like, oh, cool, man. And uh, we got to talking, and and uh, did you buy him, Did you buy him lunch? No, because you know, I, I would have. You know me, man. I would have, but uh, uh, you know, I was with the rabbit, and I can't remember the third person for the life of me. Um, Everyone is saying it's young. <laughs> no, it was definitely you, because right when you left, it yeah. went away. Yeah. 
This is the Chatter 5000 right here. This is like the ultimate headset. Like you can go on Amazon. This thing's like one thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars. It's a Chatter 5000, dude. Anyways, we're good. I think it's better. Google Hangouts kind of has some issues now and then, but um, yeah. What's the next? What's the next topic? You seen anything going on in the? Uh, man, everybody's going crazy in the comments right now. The finger is pointing. <laughs> Aisha, Yang come on now. Chris, look at that. The real Iron Dan. Yang was echoing, but Chris wasn't. Oh, see? Yang, no, you should get this thing. I'm telling you, Cheddar 5000 is a really good like instrument to have, man. I'm telling you. No, but when you left, just stop echoing. <laughs> Can't argue with that. I mean, correct um, me if I'm wrong. You're wrong. Okay, um, let's talk about the next step. So you acquire goods, okay? We've gone through some negotiation stuff. It's 8.47 p.m. First of all, hit the like button, please. Rakin. You gotta tell us how many people are on the show, man. I gotta know so I get yeah. all pumped up. Man. I mean, my father's a CPA, but I'm no mathematician. I mean, we have 166 people watching live. What? There's no 166 way. 166 people watching live, but only 79 likes and only three dislikes. I'd like to see some more dislikes. I'd like to see some more likes. I mean, we gotta get that number up. So, Yarn, what do they have to do to be able to? Let's break down that. Let's let's reverse engineer this. How do you get a, a thumbs up to happen? You just gotta. Hit the like button. You did See, it with a downward thumb. That's, that's if you not... guys join the green room, we have a whole course on how to how to how to hit the like button and and really? calories that are burned and so I'm telling you, I'm not trying to you know persuade you guys to join the green room, but we do have anyways. 101 killer strokes to hit the like button. Okay. Um, I kept using the word stroke. Oh my gosh, dude! Yeah. Why, why, what's wrong with stroke, dude? It's using golf. It's using what are you thinking about, man? We'll, and we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about, okay, so let's talk about after. Like, you got the stuff, right? Where do people go wrong with the stuff? I think one of the things that you guys can do that I think you would like is um, bring, and this, see, I go to Costco, and I, go to, I don't go to Sam's, but I go to Costco, and I also have these bins that are foldable. If you watch my videos, I have foldable black bins that I can put in my truck, and um, when I need them, gosh, I was going to say, this really weird word. When I when, when I erect the boxes, oh, the, stroke, okay. erect. oh my gosh, young erect is like a building going up. Like you, you are know so. Uh, I don't know what's going on with you today, man. Are you in like breeding season for bona fide hustler? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I think it's the radiation. Coming out. It's trying to five thousand, dude. It's like messing up with my brain. Um, so you want to put some boxes in your vehicle, okay? Don't wait to have boxes, and definitely don't just start throwing crap in your vehicle. Although. It makes for a really interesting picture, especially in the green room where people are like piling their vehicles to the top. However, if you can get some sorting done right then and there, like have a box for like maybe two boxes, one box for Craigslist, two boxes for eBay, three boxes for FBA, you know, and then put everything in those boxes as you buy it, then that's just one less thing you have to do at home when you bring it into your house. But if you're like me or Rakin, we don't bring that crap in our house until it's absolutely time for prepping it. Right, Rakin? Yep. Yep, that's a big mistake people make, and it it can really ruin your li not ruin your life, but get very close to like stressing you out. Um, you have to be very important. Ray, can talk to us about the feelings when you I, was it when you got your new place, right? Is that when this all started? Yeah, I mean, really, when I when I first got started reselling, I was I was you know working out of my bedroom. It was like 150 square feet. I was living with my parents, and I was I had like 400 clothing pieces in my little bedroom in my closet. And it was so stressful because you go, you know, everywhere you look, it's just work, 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 and it's just staring at you. And uh, if you could separate your your work from your from your life and your personal, I mean, it really helps out a lot, just in terms of stress and just lifestyle as well. Um, and productivity, because when you when if you keep them separated, when you go to work, it's like all right, now's the time to work. But if it's like mixed in together, you'll find that you'll just dabble with something, and then you'll drop it, and 20 minutes later you'll do something else, and then you'll dabble again. It'll take you seven hours to do something that only took two hours. Yeah. So be real, real adamant about separating the items immediately if you, if you can. Okay. Um, us being content creators, it doesn't quite pan out that way sometimes because. As content creators, we have to show our stuff on Periscope. We got to show it on Facebook Live. We got to show it on, you know, our videos and stuff. So sometimes it looks a little different. But there has been times when I, where there have been times where I sort it all out. I don't know how you do it, Young, but where I sort it right there as I get it, and it ends up being a world of difference when I bring it into, uh, you know, my garage. It's just like, all right, that's the eBay pile. That means pictures, pictures, pictures. That's the FBA pile, which means scanning, scanning, scanning. Um, and there's a Craigslist pile, which I usually, of all the piles, my Craigslist pile is usually the first one to go up. Cool. Because it's local, it's fast. Um, although my Craigslist app has been really screwed up lately, like I can't attach pictures. I don't know if you can, Young, 
but I have C Pro Client or something like that, C Plus Pro Client, and it's just, I wrote them a terrible review, by the way. I one starred them. <laughs> I did, and it came up as Bonafide Hustler, too, which was like, oh, but <laughs> but I, I, I reamed them on it. I was like, this is unacceptable. Like, this thing used to work, and I used to be my go-to thing, and now it's just terrible. But quite honestly, in the app space, there's not a whole lot of great Craigslist apps. Have you noticed that, Young? Um... You mean as far as see, I, I actually post all my ads through my computer. I yeah, I mean I, that's what I do now because I used to do it through the app. Now I can't even attach pictures through the app anymore. It sucks. Okay, so I've never even, I, I just have the app um, just to browse through Craigslist. Yeah. But going oh. back to what Raken said, like it's very important to uh, you know separate these items from your life. You, you got to live that really good personal life. You got to be unstressed, and you got to see. This is what someone was asking, like, what do you do after you get your goods? Like, what's the next step? The next step is planning out the time to do your listing or your shipping off, you know, it's very important to have time carved out. And for me, it's like I want all my goods in the respective places by Tuesday. That's just my rule now. So by Tuesday, you know, and sometimes it's by Monday, but so typically I like to hit the week or, uh, you know, Monday with the ground running and I don't want to be messing with that. Like for some reason I just don't. But my Craigslist stuff goes up like literally same day. Honestly, it goes up same day because I know if it's destined for Craigslist, it's got a great potential over the weekend to sell because that's when everyone's free. There's no work yeah. and they can meet, right? Because if you take a look at all the other times people meet you on Craigslist during the week, it's always in the evening typically, right? You see what I'm saying? So like, but if you come, if you put that during the day on, like if you launch your Craigslist ads right at noon on Saturday or whatever, then you're likely to have someone maybe come by an hour, two hours, you know, it's all about that, especially on Sundays. Man, people are just like, "All right, we did and church." What's, and you know? what's cool is with the margins so high, one of one if you sell like one bike or one Bob stroller, that could pay for your whole entire haul, and now your money's back in your pocket with all this profit just sitting there. Uh -huh. yeah. Cool for the mindset. <clears throat> yeah, I find Bob strollers in the nicer neighborhoods in town every now and then, but man, they're getting harder and harder to find now. There used <laughs> to be a time <clears throat> where the marketplace was, I'd find them for about a hundred, and I'd sell them for three fifty. I'm not even kidding. Oh, no, no, not 350 That's a little too high. The highest one I ever sold was 325 in mint condition. I bought that one for like 100 bucks. I've bought, I've, I've sold so many of these Bob strollers, but if you ever get a chance to hustle a Bob, I mean, they are great money. I mean, we'll go into a video about that one day, maybe in the green room, but uh, that is insane money. You got to know how to spot it. You got to know what to look for. You got to know how it folds. You got to be able to just be able to demonstrate it to the customer, and then you'd be so surprised the money you can make out of a Bob stroller. Um Okay, so let's go into, we have 108 likes, that's great. Of all the people watching, 178 people watching right now, I have one, la one question for you. We're going to end the show in like six minutes. Who is coming to Austin in three weeks? <clears throat> Who's pumped up? Very, very, very curious. I can. Um, <clears throat> Swamp Picker, what is a bob? Young, what is a bob? Uh, it's, a, um, what's a, it's, it's a baby stroller that's made for people who jog, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a made. It's a baby stroller. It's the industry standard for people that jog and that want to go around in tight spaces in stores. It has a swivel front wheel, typically with plastic rims and inflatable tires. Um, we're not talking about these tiny little, you know, wheels like a McLaren or a Graco or any of that kind of stuff. We're talking bigger tires that are 16. I want to say the front tire is 16. No, 12 in the front, and I think it's 16 in the rear, 16 inches. So. But yeah, it's absolutely the industry standard. Rankin, have you ever found a Bob Stroller before? Mm, never at a garage sale. Okay. I've sniped them off of Craigslist. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Bob's one day if someone... Uh, we'll talk about him in the green room because I consider myself a pretty decent expert at Bob's. Um, Wait, I did so, find a one. Never mind. Was it sun faded? Was it all good? <sighs> It was in good shape, but there was an issue with it. There was an issue. Oh, I now I know what the, the issue was. One of the straps. This was actually this was a really bad one. The strap where you put the kid into. One of the straps was like broken off. That's not good. <laughs> no, and I was like trying. I couldn't for some reason. I couldn't get the strap, and uh, I don't know. I just threw him a bunch of rope and said, "There you go." Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I, I sold it for a big discount. The very first one that I sold on Craigslist, my very first Bob that I sold, a lady came with her like newborn, and she's like, she's like, is this perfect for my? I told this story on Bonafide Live back in the day, back in the day, but she's like, is this gonna fit my newborn? And I was like, um, absolutely, and <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, and she she puts the straps as tight as possible, and the baby's in there, and she starts rolling it around. The baby is like jiggling around like every which way possible. There's all this space. There's this thing is like about to eject, man, and. Uh, she goes jogging down the street with it. I'm like, oh my god! I realize like I don't know that much about, 
you know, I knew how to fold it, but I didn't. I don't. It's really meant for kids that are like what past one or something like that. Cool. So she goes, is he? Do you think he's kind of loose in there? And I'm. She's like tugging the straps, and the strap is coming out at least four <laughs> inches away from the body, in every direction possible. She's like, do you think it's loose? And I'm like. You know, some people put pillows behind it. She's like, that's a great idea. I'll just put a pillow behind it. Okay, okay, here you go. Here's some money. And then I'll, she's like, how does it fold? And I'll show her. And that was like, oh, my God. I felt so awkward, especially when she went bolting down the street running, like with this kid that was like <laughs> hopping around. And it was like freaky. Anyway. Bonified the baby abuser. <laughs> I clearly didn't know what I was talking about then. But So know, would you baby. advise someone to do that? Or if you came across the situation again because you were new, you would probably – you would obviously say, listen, you know, doesn't fit. I'm hoping. Yes, I do that with bicycles when it's very obvious that the bicycle doesn't fit. I do it with bob strollers, but quite honestly, every person after that showed up with a normal-sized kid for the bob, oh. right? Like they didn't, they don't show up with like this tiny little <coughs> creature gamete-looking thing, you know? And <laughs> I said, I said, I said creature, man. All right, anyway. Is that my baby beautiful? beautiful? Yeah. Hey, man, creatures are beautiful too, man. Um, okay, so let's talk about. Uh, Parker Profits, what if I just killed a baby? Steven Seagal, what the, what the heck is Lumpia? Because there's a person named Lumpia Thief here in the comment feed who is a, quite an avid supporter of the Green Room Hangouts. Um, there are a lot of people coming to Austin, by the way, um, just so you guys know. A lot of people coming to Austin. Can't wait to see you guys. It's going to be Austin. It's going to be super cool. Um, I hope Bonafide's old lady isn't watching this. Uh, LOL, 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 LOL. All right, good. So clearly, you know, it's friendly banter, but I, it's a true story. It's absolutely true. Um, it was my very first one I sold. Okay, so let's go into um, when you pitfall, when you get it home. We've talked about, you know, separating it where it needs to be, carving out the time. Hold yourself accountable to a deadline, right? Don't just sit there like, okay, I just got to get this stuff out of here by Friday of the next week so I can just be back to normal. Look, the reason why I do it on Tuesdays is so I can have Tuesday, you know, afternoon, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to source if I want to, right? I can clear my mind. But you can't get a, cl a clear mind when you have stuff laying around. Um, another poison that I think people, what re leads to some really, really bad stuff is people, you know, you find a good and it needs something, right? It might need a remote. It might need something. It's just like, or it's not as perfect as you thought. You hustle a boombox and you're like, okay, the tape player is busted. Damn. And now what happens? This thing finds itself into like the weirdest nook and cranny of your house and you don't re revisit it till like six months later, and you're like, "Damn, I need to sell, I need to put at least put that thing up." I, don't be afraid to donate your goods, all right? And just to get them out of the way, because that's one of the easiest ways to clear your mind is to donate stale inventory. Young, could you agree on that, or Raken? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Donate or or sell them at a very high discounted price. I mean, if something's missing, just disclose it. You know, hey, I, it's ECR with no remote or something. I'd like to make another point on, on kind of on that same topic. If you know that you need to order something, like say you buy a VCR and you know you need to have the remote to, to uh, complete it, do it immediately. I was with Jameson, and he's actually – he did a great job at this. He was buying a lot of things from pawn shops and different places that needed different parts and stuff. He'd get on Amazon right after, boom, order it, come to my address, and it's like it's in, it's in it's on its way. It's in process. So if you need something, order it. If – you know, if it's gonna sit in your garage and just collect dust, and it's gonna weigh on you, which it will, every time you look at look at it, it's gonna take a piece of your heart away. <laughs> just just donate it, get rid of it, make room. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to either, you know, re that's that's I think that's what r causes a lot of the hoarding out there, right? It's people that are like, okay, well, I already sold the bike, I sold all the great stuff, and I sold the you know the coffee machine that was worth this, and I sold that amazing jacket that was worth that. And now I'm down to this stuff that might make me ten dollars or five dollars a piece, right? And I gotta still list it, and so it's ending up in a bin somewhere or on the ground. Just donate that crap, man. You're in the game to make big money, right? You're not in the game to make five dollars here, four dollars there. You're not in the game for that. At least we're not in the game for that. I'm certainly not in the game for that. But uh, you know, don't be afraid to just turn. You know, just go right to your your nearest savers, your nearest goodwill. Get yourself a tax receipt. And uh, move on, like move on and clear your mind. It's so important. I see a lot of people messing up right there. And the reason I can say that is you can look at the background of, of some people's videos, right? And you look at the background. If the background looks nice and clean and clear, typically the mind is clean and clear as well. Look at that. Young's table has like nothing on it. Um, and Raken's, you know, place looks pretty decent. My place has pretty much nothing here. And quite honestly, that just shows you what your mind is in that state. If you have a bunch of stuff behind you, and it's you know semi-organized, but it's still a bunch of crap everywhere, and you can tell, it's just, uh-oh, Raken is showing us a tiny little. Okay, so you you kept it to a tiny little pile, and uh, not perfect. 
<laughs> I have a boombox right here, so that'll be in my booth tomorrow. But anyway, um, but yeah, you know, just sit there and and really be honest with yourself. You got to be honest with yourself and not be afraid to like you know turn this stuff in. Um, <clears throat> okay, and pay attention. <laughs> pay attention to like uh, if you're a content creator, pay attention to your background too, because you know it's like okay, you know I I sell all this stuff and all this, and then you let the background is like just it's about to like avalanche on your face like you know what I'm talking about you ever seen some people's videos and it's just I don't quite get it sometimes I'm not, I'm not talking trash about anybody but it just seems kind of weird I'm like okay I'm making a lot of money but then what is all this stuff in the background like I don't get it like why keep sourcing if all this stuff is like nearly about to crush your head on the video? Like, I don't get it <laughs> did a reseller die last month with like a bunch of stuff <laughs> crashed on him <laughs> I don't know I don't know but the, quite honestly like you know do your due diligence and, and if you gotta donate donate or have a garage sale we see some green rumors doing garage sales young you just had one right I, just had, one. Yeah. I had one I had one four week, uh, five weeks ago or something. I didn't man it because there's no way in hell you'd find me manning my own garage shell because I just don't do that. But my wife manned it, and the first two people that came up were like, oh, my gosh, you're a bona fide officer's wife. No way. The first person, the first person that came up was like, wait a minute. I've seen this no house way. In, video, in a video. This is the bona fide hustler's house, right? And my wife's like, oh. She's <laughs> like, you're, you're the Whitney girl. And he, she's like, yeah. And then... The second person came up, and I happened to be doing a drop-off in the morning. Like, I found some really great stuff, like, immediately, like, first 20 minutes in the morning. So I was in my neighborhood, and I was like, all right, let me go drop it off at my house. And there comes up this, like, really, you know, pretty good-looking girl, honestly. And she's like, oh, my gosh, you're the bona fide hustler. That was, like, the second person of the morning. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, my gosh, I watched your video. She's like, wow, this is so cool. I cannot believe this is your house. Oh, my gosh. I was like, look, if you see anything you like, just tell me, and I'll give it to you. And that's what I told her, but I was like, I gotta get out of here because <laughs> I was still hustling. So kind of, kind of funny. Uh, share, share, Isler, you guys are great, by the way. Pete is in the feed. Craigslist Hunter, what is up, Pete? You know, I, I gotta, I gotta applaud Pete on something real quick. Um, you had a video, was it last week, Raken? The most controversial Pete video ever. Yeah, there was a bunch of comments on that video. I think we all know what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, but quite honestly, you know, to shed some light. Um, I thought it was, it was a great video. video. It was a great video. You know, it takes a lot of, like, uh, hell, I'll say it. It takes a lot of balls to put up a video like that, showing, like, you know, that the Goodwills are using some of Pete's expertise or videos to start <clears throat> pricing goods a certain way. And, like, there's all this flack coming Pete's way, and Golden Finger Picker did a really good job of, like, you know, <clears throat> handling all that. And quite honestly, we're not, destro we're not destroying anything. Like, this is just common knowledge. You can go to any Reddit feed and know what to buy. You can go to all this. You can go to the Green Room, a bunch of free groups. I mean, these all, all these places exist. Um, to teach you, and if you're worried about prices going up, it means you're too. I think you're too too into narrow into a niche, right? You got to expand, man. You got to be like Raken, who starts with shirts, clothes, then you start messing with bikes, or those bikes, then clothes, then some outdoor stuff, and I want to say, then you go into like uh, books, is it? No, you was all over the place, man. Yeah, dude, but like, like, yeah. That's, but that's what I'm saying is like you got to be, you got to be. The, the only way to safety in this game is to know a lot or a little about a lot of things. Does that make Pete sense? Does a, I don't think there's anyone out there who knows as much about a lot as, as Pete. I mean, having his own store and everything, he has so much knowledge, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's great because he can hustle current day stuff all the way down to like the vintage level, which is really cool. But quite honestly, like you know, it was really brave for him to make a video like that because the backlash was quite substantial, but at the same time, people really, you get, you get to see the real hustlers emerge out of the space very quickly, and the thought process is of these real hustlers, and the thought process is always like, things are always going to change in this game. They're always going to change, and you cannot blame other people for your mistakes, for your mishaps, or any of that stuff. You have I, to take accountability immediately. I feel like the reseller community took a few steps forward after that video, because I remember a couple of years ago when videos would go out like that, it would be like 96% of the people just like, they're just, they're just so negative and like, just like, going crazy and I felt like it was only like 10% like the reselling community as a whole is growing and they're getting smarter and more mature I don't know if you noticed that based on the responses even though there were still some you know negative but you noticed that at all over the last couple of years oh yeah I think people are definitely getting smarter about the game and more into the fact that you got to work hard in this game like anything in life and if you work hard you get rewarded if a part of your income stream gets shut down that better not be your entire income stream, right? You better be diversified. We see a lot of that out there now, which is cool. When we first started, it was a bunch of Ebays, right? It was a bunch of eBay people. FBA was barely around the horizon. Um, you know, Craigslist was still there and everything like that. But, you know, we make this content. It, my channel was started um, to, 
inform people. Raikens the same, and you know we just happen to make products for people because there were just so many comments coming in, like when are you gonna make a bike guide? When are you gonna do this? When are you gonna make a cool guide about this stuff? And it got me thinking, like maybe I should make a guide. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. And that's what content creators do. Is we just if we see a need and we want to get rewarded for our time spent, which that stuff does not take. I mean, we on this last garage sale guide that we built, it's taken us three weeks, four weeks, something crazy, right? So. Yeah. I mean, it's been it's been a while with, with with the graphics and getting back and forth with the editor and the, the content creation part. I mean, the outlining and the, the the strategy. It's taken quite you know it's not it's not easy stuff. So for someone to go out of their way and to build something, you know, no one's telling you to buy it, right? No one's telling you to buy it. But you know, if if you like the people's videos, if you like Pete's video, then anything that Pete makes is likely to be just as good as his video. His like his content is going to be just as good, right? So anyway. Um, that pretty much does the show. I think we got, uh, you know, um, I think we got a lot of people watching and uh, had a fun show. It was really good. I got to tell yeah. you the most honest truth before we go into housekeeping is I am 100% under the weather right now, like completely under the weather. Raken is too. Now, you might not have seen this in the video because we really <coughs> value the content that we give to you guys. And so I'm not sick, but, like, I'm bored. I don't feel good. Like, I definitely don't feel good. I feel like a freaking freight And I offered to take over the show, and I said you didn't have to show up. And you said, you want to know what? I, I want to do it. I want to help people. I want to get out there and, and make it happen. And you did. Yeah, and I was feeling awful. I got to tell you, this stuff called BC Powder, guys, if you don't know what it is, BC Powder is, like, the best stuff on earth. Legit. It's so good. I feel amazing. Like, if I shake my head, I don't have any more headache, no more sore throat, but it's probably going to come back. But anyway. Show it. Shake um, your head. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> it might be there. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're going to housekeeping. Uh, Raken, what's going on with housekeeping? Um, what's coming up soon? Obviously, there's a very big thing coming up soon. Yeah, today's uh, June 15th, so uh, in, in about uh, well, two weeks from now, I'm going to be making my way over to Austin, Texas. I'll be there for 10 days. Uh, July 9th is our green room event. Tickets are closed off. I believe it may be open for a few more people, um, but it's pretty much closed off. Um, yeah, Garage Sale Killer, our book is is, is coming out soon. Um, I'm trying to think. A lot of updates to the website for all members who are watching right now. We are putting out a lot of content, private shows. Yong just put out a few of them. Uh, Chris just put out another one. So if you are a member, make sure that you register to thegreenroomuniversity.com. You can only get in if you're a member, but uh, just tons of tons of content that we're putting behind the scenes for members only. Yep. So there you guys go. If we'll see you in Austin, I mean, if you guys are coming to Austin, whoever's coming to Austin, we'll see you guys soon. Hopefully, it won't be any monsoon rainstorms like we've been having in the past three weeks. But now it's heat index of like 110 today, by the way, Raycon. Just so you heads up, man. Okay. Make sure you bring your speedo and your mankini, all right? Because it's going to be hot, and bring some flip flops because you won't be able to walk around on the ground if you don't have flip flops. So, yeah. Um, what, one thing I want to say too is if you know for next year, guys, if you want to get in uh, to the event, um, you know, join the green room, check it out. It's we, it's a lot more than just a Facebook group. Um, we have the Facebook group, we have the yearly event, we have private shows for the members, training videos for the members, we have eBooks, courses, videos, um, just a lot of cool stuff, including the Facebook group for the members. So don't feel bad if you can't come to the event this year. Um, we will have another one next year, but uh, yeah, check us out. Oh, greenroomuniversity.com if you're interested in uh, joining and being a part of a community. And we also have uh, mini meetups throughout the year. So oh, yeah. Mini meetups time. coming up. Uh, there's like, going to be a San Diego one in August. Um, there's going to be a Houston one probably in November. Maybe Dallas is in November too. But there's definitely going to be – I love going to Houston. God, but the Houston one was so much fun when I went. And I Was it February? Oh, I had so much fun at that one. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I definitely want to make my way back to Houston, and I know there's going to be a San Diego one, Santa Clara, or maybe San Jose with Young at some point, and then when Eric gets uh, back to normal, um, I think it's going to be Florida maybe, and then Steve's always running his own little meetups in Connecticut. So um, that's it. That's basically the show, guys. If you like the show, the number one thing you can do before you leave Smash is it. hit that like button, and if you're watching this after it's live, hit the like button. We will definitely see the support. We appreciate all the comments. If we didn't get to your question, just, you know, it, it, there are a lot of people in the room like commenting, we're sorry. Um, but at the same time, we value the time that you've come on, on, that you've spent here watching us. Hope you got some great tips. Don't mess up your golden hour or your golden hours, and make sure you know how to fold up a Bob stroller so your babies don't go flying out. And uh, <laughs> we will see you guys on the next show. Stroke that like button. Ha <laughs>